So, Peter, let's tell me about Bill Squalis. Who was this character? Squalis. Squalis. Bill Squalis was the mayor of Gloucester. When? More or less I what year? I believe it was around 1988. Yep. And you said something yeah. happened when he was mayor. Well, no, no, nothing, nothing happened. Right. It's just that uh, that was the first year of the uh, Pride Stride. Pride Stride, and yep. And he challenged me to write a poem for the Pride Stride. Oh, so you wrote a poem for the Pride Stride. But then tell me what he did in the middle of his term, you told me. Oh, uh, I really don't know the ins and outs of right. it. Right. All I know is that he left early to get another job. Because he got, you said, a better deal. Better deal, yeah. Got a better deal. And so you think he's now in another town somewhere? Yeah, I think he's in Newburyport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going back to the Cat of Nine Tails. Yes. Okay? What, is it, what, what does the Cat of Nine Tails mean to you? Cat of Nine Tails is a whip. A whip? A whip. And uh, it actually has, it's, it's, you know, it's a whip type thing, but it has thongs on the... Right, it's that plant that's, that's sharp and spiky on the top. Well, no, they, they, they're rubber, really, most rubber. Or they're like, like maybe shops to shoelaces. Right. But there's nine of them. And then when they whip you, you get the nine the scratches on your back. Oh. How old were you when they whipped you? I was nine. What did you do so terrible that they whipped you? Okay, so what happened is that uh, my last home was in Whitman, Massachusetts. And it was with the, um, I, I don't forget, I forget the name of the people. But all I know is the state lady took me in to this home. And the mother and father were there, and their two children were watching TV, sitting on the couch. And they were watching Howdy Doody. Now, if you remember, you ever heard Right, of, of course. Oh, everybody's heard of Howdy yes. Doody. Except the youngsters. Right. So I turned around and I sat down with the two kids to watch Howdy Doody. Right. And the state lady did her business with the, the two people, and then she left. And then the father comes over to me and says, what do you think you're doing? I said, I'm watching Howdy Doody. Says, no, no, no. They watch Howdy Doody. You work. You work? Yeah, you work. So then he took me by the head of the hair and led me out of the house into the backyard, and that's where I got the lesson of the cat and I took. I wonder what kind of awful human beings those kids grew up to be. I have no idea. Because... You know what? When you go through pain, you block out right. the side. I don't know what reaction those kids had toward it or nothing. Yep. All I know is that I was taken down the back and I was, you know, got the lesson of nine it's years. Terrible. So working uh, <clears throat> was working his ga his gas station, cranking gas, oh. cranking oil, yep. or whatever. And of course he didn't pay you for that because you... You know, I was tired. What would happen is he, he brought me down there and I would be tied by the ankle with a chain around my Literally ankle. tied by the ankle by a chain. Chain the to the corner of the garage. Come on. You're yeah. chained like an animal. Yeah. So, Peter. Yes. This is our second day of um, interviewing you about your absolutely incredible life story. And yesterday we stopped at a cliffhanger. So we're going to take the viewer back here. You're at the garage pumping gas and you have, you're chained at the ankle to right. the garage, right? Yes. At the yes. gas station. Right. And now this have, is more or less the 1951-ish or 52-ish? Um, I would say 52. 52? Yeah, because I, I returned to Gloucester in 53. Yeah. Okay. So people are... Uh, so you're doing this, you're working at the gas station owned by one of the people that were giving you housing. Yeah, a uh, uh, foster home. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And you said this was in Woodman, Massachusetts? In Whitman. Whitman, Whitman, sorry, Whitman, Massachusetts. At Whitman, Mass. All right, so take us back to that. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, like I say, uh, I worked every day there to, in uh, pumping gas or pumping oil, and uh, I was chained by the ankle. Now, to me, remember, I'm, I'm maybe nine years old at this time. Right. So, to me, maybe a little chain was a big chain to me. Right. Okay? It would be horrible to anyone. Right. But what well, it was, okay? Yeah. But people would say, well, why do you have that little boy, you know, on that chain? And they, he would say, well, he has a habit of running away. Because remember, well, I didn't tell you, but... That gas station is located right by the rail tracks in Whitman. 
So he had an excuse. Right, you might jump on the train. Uh, run on the train. Right. Run on the track or something. Yep. That's awful. So, That's awful. But I was there for about a year. Yep. And then you came back to Gloucester the following year. No, I came back to Gloucester that year. I came back to Gloucester in, in January of 1953. Okay. Okay, Peter, so fast. So then it's, we're now in, you said 1952. Or 53. 53. 53. You're 10 50. years old. Yeah. 1953, Peter Albert Todd is 10 years old, coming back to Gloucester. Right. Because your father had gotten remarried. Right. And somehow, how did he find you or did the state find him? No, um... Uh, I, I think that he was paying support. He was paying oh, okay. the state. Oh, okay. You know, he, he had to pay alimony or to whatever. The, right, child support to the state. Right, to the state. Because the mm. people that took us in, right. they get paid for it. Well, that was terrible. If somebody's getting paid to take you in, they should have treated you like one of their family. Right. See, I, I don't get that. I don't know the of that because I wasn't involved with that. Right. You know. Okay, so how did you feel when you came back at the age of 10? Well, when I came back at the age of 10 with my sister, yep. she was with me, uh, I just felt I didn't know. I didn't know where I was or nothing because, you know, I was a baby when I left Gloucester. Right. So now I'm returning at 10 years old, so it's all strange to me. And, you know, when I came into my new, you know, my stepmother, you know, I found out I had two or three other sisters and brothers. Right. Didn't know existed. Right, and so that's when you said you decided to go out, to get a, go out and shine shoes to get away from all these kids. Right. right. Yeah, my cousin, uh, his name was Harry Vanna. He used to sell stuff out of the trunk of his car to oh, gas okay. stations and things like that. And so he said to me one day, he says, how about going shining shoes? And he went in the, in the trunk of his car and he got an Esquire shoe shine box out. Oh, that's where you got the shoe shine box. And yeah. it had the supplies in it too? Right, yep. And so, did he give that to you as a present? Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. So next thing you know, the guy in the Gloucester Railroad Depot mm -hmm. tells you it doesn't look good for you to be wandering around shining right. shoes, so he orders a special shoe shine stand for you from Boston right. and deliver it. So next thing you know, you're like 10 years old and you're shine, you have your own shoe shine stand right. in, the, in the railroad station. Right. Yep. Quite the entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I used to have good customers. And you liked your job? Did you like your work? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, Mayor Collis used to get shoe shine. Yeah, oh yeah, Mayor, Mayor Collis. Yeah, Mayor Collis, Beaches Collis. Yep. Yeah, and um, all the councilors, city councilors and things, they used to get shine. Yeah. Oh yeah, because, uh, you know, in them days, city council was mostly automobiles, you know, salesmen. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. And what would happen is that they would run the council and you would have a student vacant dealership Guy running for council, uh, Chevrolet. Oh, they were all car dealers? That's just car a coincidence? Dealers, they would run, right, all owners. Yeah. And they would run for council. Did they have car dealerships here in Gloucester or out of town? No, here. Yeah. What happened to all of them? Where were they? They all went out of business, just about. Where were those dealerships located? Uh, well, when I lived on Washington Street, you know, 124 Washington Street, where Duncan Donuts is now, yep. that used to be Raleigh, Pontiac, and Cadillac. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. And we were in Washington? Where Duncan's is now. Or Where Duncan Duncan's is. is. Yep. They used to be Raleigh, Pontiac, and Cadillac. So you get the story of Peter, you get the story of Gloucester. It's That's amazing. Right. So so all the auto dealers, was that just a coincidence they all wanted to run for city council? It was just No, that's where you sell cars. That's where you sell cars. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's right. Sure. Sure. And uh, I used to go over to um Pearson Hoskins Chevrolet. Uh, you know where the uh Maplewood Avenue? Do you have the nail place in front of 7-Eleven? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, yep. the car wash, yep. the liquid yep. car wash. Well, that used to be PSN Hoskins Chevrolet. Okay. And also, did you choose your type of car you wanted based on which guy you liked the best? Oh, I don't know. That's interesting. Yep. Okay, so you're doing your shoe shine business, and so your, your life's getting better. You're having a stable life with your right. dad and your stepmom and your siblings? Right. right. Yeah. And uh, do you want me to tell you about about, yeah, keep going, yep. About my mother? Yeah, please. Oh, okay. no, you told us yesterday about your mother. Okay, all right. So you meet your mother on her deathbed. Yep. And she, and at that time, you were also, you were 11, or, or how old were you? I was 11. 11. Yep. Yep, so that was in 1954. Yeah, she yep. died, she died March, March 21st, 1954. What kind of an impact did that have on your life, meeting her and then you losing her so quickly? Um, 
I really was kind of lost. I kind of just buried myself into Main Street, trying shoes and things yep. like that. I uh, I didn't I didn't I gave up the, the depot because I didn't want you know it, the fact that I saw her once there. Yep. And she was so troubled, and then she died afterwards. Oh. That I didn't want to go back. Oh there. wow. So I went took up went down Main Street. Wow. So, so you took your shoeshine business to Main Street. Right. Oh wow. Shoe shine box and all. <laughs> okay. So did you finish high school? Where did no. you? How how far did you go in school? Seventh grade. So you have a seventh grade education. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's amazing. So a actually, see what what happened is when you're in Fox State Homes, you 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 stay in a home for a period of you know when you get school age, you're put in a home a week before school, and you're taken out a week after school, oh. and you're put in an orphanage till the next home arrives. You know comes right. up. So it's usually, you know, the school period, you're in a state foster home, and then during the summer or whatever, you're in an orphanage till the next one. Wow. That's awful. Yeah. So, so you got to school then? If, you, if they, was, was, did they put you in the foster home so that you could be counted as a resident so that you get into a school? Right. Okay, and then... Ten days later, they they take you out. They take me out. No, is they put me in like ten? I'm guessing, okay. Yeah. But say roughly ten a week, a couple of weeks yeah. before school, they would put you in a new home. Right. Okay. Then you would go, you know, go to school and stuff like that. For a and few then, days. <laughs> no, no, for the whole school year. Oh, for the whole school year, because school then year. when you went back to live in the orphanage, you could still go to that school because no. you had... No, no, no oh. you could go in the orphanage till the next school year. Till the next school The next year. home. Next and you go to that home, home a couple weeks before. Oh, I thought you it said... It was never the same city. He oh, went okay. to city oh, to city. So the other question is, when you're in school, did the other kids treat you differently because you were in a foster home? Did oh, you yeah. get bullied? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They bullied the whole bit. Yeah. So, but you graduated in Gloucester in seventh grade? No, I didn't graduate. You just went to seventh grade. Yes, when I, I I finished almost the seventh grade, I not completely full, th through it, and uh, just went out and I was getting too big to shine shoes, and went out and went to work. What did you start doing for work? Picking ice at the at the wasps, things like that. When when you got to seventh grade, at that time, was that the end of grade school? Did you have grade school, middle school, and then high school, or did you? When was it eighth grade that? The seventh grade. I, he stopped at seventh grade. Stopped you stopped at seventh grade. Seventh and didn't even yeah, graduate seventh grade. seventh grade. But when did the high school start? At ninth or eighth? What, high school? No, like, he didn't go to high school. school. No, he no. didn't go anywhere. He didn't. But did you finish middle school? No. Or no. Was, there was no middle school? There was no such thing. Okay, he so just finished grade, seventh grade. So it was no, grade. didn't fi didn't finish seventh grade, right? Just went right, to seventh grade. To so seventh. you so it, if you'd finished, it would have been you would have had to finish eighth grade, and right. then you would have been out of high right. school. Okay, so that's only two: grade school and then high school. Okay. So how did you? When did you start writing poetry? I started writing poetry in 1976. So you were 33 years old. Right. Okay. So between, between you leaving school and going to work in that period, tell us about your life. So you were an ice picker. What else? What other jobs did you do along the way? Um, well, you know, after I got through shining shoes and things like that, and the, the ice picker and all that, I just had various jobs. And then I went my own janitorial business. Yeah. Oh, you had your own janitorial business? Yeah. yeah. So I have to tell Greg Verga your story about how you moved Tony out of his office. Did you hear that story? Yeah. So, so you had you were your own you were your own man again. Right. You had your own How old were you then? Oh, oh, I don't. Oh, see, cause I also went in the Marine Corps during. But that was only. Oh, you missed that. How did you go to the Marines? How old were you then? I joined the Marines. Uh, nineteen sixty. I joined the Marines. Okay, so you were seventeen. Right. So did you did you get treated equally in the Marines as everybody else? Was that equal treatment? Do they treat everyone the same? No. What happened? Marines was rough. I love the Marines, okay? But what happened is that I was only in there for 22 days. Why? Well, when I went, first I tried for the Air Force. Yep. Right? Didn't make it. Yep. Didn't, but I made it for the Marines. Yep. So I went to Paris Island and <coughs> I went through training. But see, in, in, the, in the Marine Corps, 
they have this thing where you we have to pay pass strength oh, tests. Yep. Or I couldn't pass the strength test. Oh, that's right. You couldn't pass it because you had been sickly your whole life. Right, right. So I couldn't pass the strength test. So therefore, they would set me back in training. Oh. All right. So no, if you're up to your second week of training. Yep. You don't pass the test, then you go back to your first week of training. Yep. All right. And, and then eventually you go to physical training. You know, words, they would put me, how do I put this? They would put me in what they call strength platoon, which is to build me up. But the problem with that, strength platoon also con included conditioning platoon, which is the overweight boys. It also included the attitude platoon, uh, which is guys that had really, attitude. Yeah, they didn't listen. Right. So the, all four type people would be in that training. So <coughs> that must have been rough. Right. I got set back about three times in training. So you know, it was not only have been twelve weeks of training for the whole thing, but mine ended up to be six weeks of physical training. Yep. And then four weeks of regular sure. training. Okay. Alright. So then at that I turned around and went in I went uh, oh this last place I, I I was told to report to the barracks, and it, I went from a Quonson hut on my first two weeks of training to a wooden barracks on my second part of training, wow. and then the third I ended up in the brick ones, the new Oh, brick wow. Ones. Like, just like the three little pigs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what happened is I went to port, report the drill instructor, and he took one look at me and says, Private Todd, report to sick bay. Whoa. So Whoa. I had to go to sick bay. Uh, they, Turn around. They said you have the German measles. Oh my! All right. Word. Okay. So they put me into Buford Hospital, Buford, San, Buford, South Carolina Hospital. Yep. And there, they put me next to the TV board. Oh my word! Okay. So oh, I think he told us this. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to. We're getting it recorded. Yeah, this, exactly. Yeah. So so what happened? I had to go for these board of doctors. Officer. Right. And one of the doctors says, uh, Private Todd, what is your mother die of? And I said, tuberculosis. And they all turn white as a sheep. Oh. Okay. Wow. They could have saved you time if they'd asked you that question before you right. ever signed up. Right. But remember, you're not allowed to talk it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, they said, well, you got your choice. You can do four years in Buford Hospital, you know, the rest of your training in the hospital, or you can go home. So I took home. Right. right. So, but the reason why I was so sickly is because I went from 150 pounds down to 95 pounds. Oh, wow. That's why they gave me the discharge. So I got an oral discharge, but it was it's called a line aptitude. Discharge. Why did you lose so much weight? We don't know. Oh, you don't know. Never found out. Never found out. No. It's an Never incredible story. Out. Okay, so you come back from the Marines, and then this, after that you did your janitorial business? Yeah. Okay, and when did you meet Barbara, your wife? Wait, yes. did you get married? You got married before that, though, right? No. No, she was your first marriage. No, she... my second marriage. That's no, what I was gonna say. So marriage. talk about your first wife, or? Uh, I don't really want to talk. About okay, that. just was there bad. was one. That was bad memories. How long were you married, though? Six years. Okay, you're married for six years. Yep. Okay. I'll put it this way: myself and my dog went running away. Okay. Running away. <laughs> so you have a daughter from that first marriage, though. Dog. Daughter. Dog. Okay. No, no dog. Dog. Oh, you have the Maybe. dog from the first marriage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She's Is that the, the dog that lived for so long? My first still around. Okay. But no so kids, have, thank God. No. Okay, no that's kids. good. I don't have any kids at all. Oh, you have no kids at all? No. Oh, my goodness. I didn't realize that. I thought no. you did. I couldn't have them. Oh. Because I had the malnutrition. Oh, the yeah. Right. Yeah. You've had a really tough life. So, so when did you meet Barbara? I met Barbara. <laughs> in the hospital. No, I met, right. I met right. Barbara and, in the pediatric wards of the Asheville Hospital. So tell us that story. Okay. Well, as you know, I, I told you I'm in the cleaning business. And one of the places I cleaned, I cleaned all the places in Essex. I cleaned the high side, Farnham's, the Ship Ahoy, Skipper's Galley. Wow. The Hollywood. Really? And the Hollywood, it was a country western bar. Ah. Okay. And. In Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, it's called the Hollywood. Yeah, okay. <laughs> How about Texas? <laughs> and, and the guy's name, the owner was Larry Giuliano. 
And, and he turned around and asked me one day, he says, he says, would you clean my cottage for me? So his cottage was like a small little tiny house on the side of the bar. So I, clean, I went to clean it. And what happened is I had bleach. I, I dumped a gallon of bleach into the bowl, toilet bowl. was trying to clean it. It wouldn't clean. So then I took a Braino drip. They used to call them brick Drainos. They were like a little right. brick. Because obviously you hadn't had chemistry class in high school. I had, to know no, not to do that. No, no. And I had this, you know. No. Right. <laughs> and so anyway, I dropped the thing in there. And when it did, it blew up. And it blew the bathroom, you know, the toilet and everything, off the cottage. And I went flying through the house, through the oh. cottage, through the window. Oh, my word. Oh, my God. Okay. So oh. they rushed me to the hospital, asked me to go to the hospital, and I was on a breathing tank. And uh, my buddy, Tom Cochran, he was overseeing me for the breathing tank. And... After a while, I got off the breathing tank and it was transferred to, not to the pediatric ward, but outside the pediatric ward. All right, and I was on this, you know, bed, whatever it was, and they had a, a, a thing with milk going down into my esophagus to cool my esophagus. Right. And that's where I met my wife, Barbara. She had, uh, I guess she had come up to visit her mother, who was in the hospital. And so I met her there. You know, it's, she walked past your room? Yeah. And you no, saw past her? my bed. Past your bed. Oh, because her mother was in the same area. Right. Well, see, her mother was in the, in the in a room. Yep. But I was in a room. I was in the hallway. Oh. Okay. The hallway. All right. So everybody would walk by me. Oh. All right. And, you know, I, I had that I thought she was stupid, cute. Yeah, you know, I had that super milk coming right. down in my esophagus. Right. So that's where we met. Well, how do you, did she say hi to you? Oh yeah, we got through talking, we got talking and stuff You like have that. a thing going yourself, I guess, and you're having, you're chatting up a girl right. from your hospital bed. Right. Flip so one. you literally have no shame. No. <laughs> no. Nope. She saw you or you saw her? Um, we both saw each other. That's amazing. At your absolute, she saw you at your worst and she still liked you. Right, yeah. That's great. Well, she, she's been by my side That's amazing. all the way through. How did you pay for the hospital at that time? I don't know. I have no idea. Now let's talk about... Um, so you, you started writing poems, yeah. and then did you document some of these poems? No. Well, you've got one on a book here. Yeah, but that's more... that's so many... yeah. Yeah, I, I, doc, I really don't know what document means. It means write it up for and in a way that everything in my every my all my original poems are handwritten. Mm -hmm. I used to write them in back of uh, placemats. Right. Yeah. But somebody wrote some of them up in the magazine called Reflections, like. Right. Okay. Who was that? Um, that was uh, Mr. Seraphine over West Gloucester. He was my he he was my thing that did my first book. I did a thousand books. And what happened is we did the thousand books, and we had them in like three big boxes, and we took them down to Rockport at a, a, a Christmas party, and I had two of the boxes in my car, or yeah. truck, whatever I had, and one we bought in to give to people. Someone stole the books and burned them. Oh. Took my ones and burned them. Mm -hmm. So the, the thousand, they burned a thousand books. Or? Yeah. Almost, so, a, almost a thousand. And it was a thousand copies, of, but a thousand of one, one book, basically. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. And why did he do that? Because he... Was, no, no, no. Someone did it. I don't know who did no, it. No, no. Someone burned a thousand books, right. but why did Mr. Seraphine... Oh, he, he was my publisher. Oh, you already were... You already had a pub... He became your publisher. He was my publisher, yeah. And it, what else did he publish? Oh, I have no idea. He, that's the only thing he did for me. His wife was a waitress at the half side. So that's how you met them? Yeah. Oh, and so she knew you, so his wife knew that you wrote poems. And right, because I used to write them on the back of the placemats. Placemats. Right. Did you ever write one for her? No, I don't think I wrote one for her. Oh! No. 
Did no. You? See, when I was when I wrote the poems by hand, it was like I, I write them now ten minutes with the computer. Yeah. So maybe it's about thirty minutes by hand. Right. Okay. What would happen is that I'd be cleaning the house side. Well, it was me and my uncle, and I would get to it before for him. Okay, so he would be doing the kitchen. And while he was doing the kitchen, I'd go in and pick up a placemat, flip it over, and write a poem. Oh. Yeah. And that, that they would pass them out, they would give them to customers. So this was when you had your janitorial business. Yep. This was before yep. you tried to put the Drano in, into the yeah. beach. And well, before you was met after, Barbara. That was after. That was afterwards. Yeah, the Barbara. Drano happened first. Oh. <laughs> Barbara let you go back to janitorial? Oh, yeah. Time? Oh my God! How long were you? Let's go back to the hospital for a minute. No. How long were you in the hospital at that time before I think they? It was a couple of weeks. At least a couple of weeks. So before your lungs and your stomach recovered. Right. Which we found out probably was the damage that's been all my life. Because <laughs> I've always had trouble with my esophagus. Because it probably burned. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! So Barbara's around for. I've heard this story before, where somebody meets somebody who's ill, takes care of them, and then, and then they live happily ever after. Well, like I said, Bar Barbara met. We I met Barbara at the um, at the hospital, but I really we really didn't get attached until I started chasing after. Her. Oh, when you get out of the hospital. Right. Well, see, I was also working part time as a security guy. Okay. Where and was had, that? Uh, that was in Peavy. It was in the leather, the leather, the, the leather companies. Uh -huh. I used to be a security guy for them. But not sure security was called. And uh, so what happened is I, I had you know, I had the not sure security car, which had the big bubble on top and right. a little bit. It looked like a cruiser. So I went by the back shore and I chased after her one day. And she thought I was a cop and pulled over ah. a little bit. And that's how we really met. <laughs> where on the North Shore was she? Did you know why did you go by that way? Did you know where she lived, or you? No, I just kept on following. Oh, you were a stalker. I was a stalker. Yes, I was a stalker. Don't forget now. See, see, Byron had a rough flight too, but yes, he doesn't like to talk to him about. It. She had a horrible first marriage. Right, how horrible, horrible. But what happened is that. Uh, you know, like I said, we, I chased Barbara down, we went for, went together for a couple of years, and then we got married. But she's my second marriage. Right. Yeah. And you were her second marriage, too. Yep. So where was she living at the time? That you, so how did you find out where she lived? Oh, that's, that was easy. Oh. Because um, uh, she loved... See, Barbara's is, story is a, in a movie in itself. All right? But Barbara lived with the with the um, Weber family over on one twenty eight, uh, one thirty three, West Gloucester. Uh huh. You know, as you're coming down one thirty three toward Essex, you have that blinking yellow light. Um, there's a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, blinking uh -huh. yellow light, and you come down below, and there's this house that looks like it's falling apart. Any Never minute. noticed it. Okay. Okay, that's where she was raised. Oh. Okay. But her last name was not Weber. What was her last her name? Real name. Her real last name was Jones. Jones. Yeah. Barbara Jones. Barbara Jones. Well, there's probably four million of them in the United States. Right. Okay. But uh, yeah, and Barbara's story is very confusing, very sad. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So you were way up. I mean, you were in Gloucester though. So you somehow found out where she lived from somebody. Hmm. And then you started cruising in in your oh, security it, department vehicle. You started cruising around Essex. Yeah. <laughs> See, a lot of that's gone. My memory memory's gone. You know what I'm saying? But I, I try to. You know, I have short-term memory problems. That's what that's what mine is. But yeah, Barbara's. She, well, we're talking about the long-term memory right. now, so you should be okay. Yeah. So Barbara. But, yeah, Barbara was raised by the Webbers, okay. Um, some history there too, and uh, 
she had a daughter by a, by a previous marriage. You met her. No, no, you didn't meet her. No, I don't think so. No, it was Janice. And, uh, you know, and stuff like that. But the house that's there now looked nothing like when she lived there. I see. That house that when she was there had all beautiful flowers, everything. It was just, it was a picture. A picture in itself. That, oh. Yeah. But the guy that bought it later on has wrecked it, he destroyed it. Wow. Hmm. So you're, you're coming back, so because you've got the company car now, you're going from Gloucester to Essex. Yeah. To... Oh, no, 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 no. No, I just chased Barrow with, 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 with the security car, you know, just uh, on the back shore and stuff. Then we started going on our own car, you know. So and you had a car then, or she had a car? I, no, she had a car and I had a car, but oh. we started going around in her car. So, she had a, a, a 67 uh, value, Plymouth value. I do know what that is, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I painted it for her. Oh my God. You know, what happened is that uh, this friend of mine, George Skinner, had a body shop for Bella Dollar Square. And uh, I asked him if I could paint her car. Now he had painted three cars that day, never had a problem, right? I turned around and did I took Barbara's car, it was a value, and I air sanded it. Oh. Right, 80, 80, number 80 sandpaper. Okay. And I sandpapered the whole, the whole car down, masked it off and everything, and painted it. I didn't get one run. Whoa. But, and I painted it blue, purple. Oh my God. Did she want a purple car? She loved it. Oh. She loved it. <laughs> Wow. So was she? Where was she living then? Because she was. If she. Five eighty one Essex Avenue. With her daughter at that point. Yeah, with her daughter and her and her, you know. Her foster parents. Foster or, parents. Yeah. But to her, they weren't foster parents. They to were. Her, they were parents. Family. Right. right. They were family. Because she hadn't seen her father in forty four years. Yeah. Her her story is really something. Oh. Right. Oh my God. So now, okay. So then you and Barbara decide to get married and then yep. where did you live? We, we, or were you already living there someplace? Yeah, we were living in a couple of places together, yeah, you know, but we lived in Essex. Before you were married? Uh, no, well yeah, before we were married and then when, when we were married, uh, we had our reception there. Oh, <laughs> where was that, at, at the Weber's? No. No, the reception was at our, our apartment in, in, uh, in Essex. Oh. Yeah, we had we, we were renting this a uh, house, one side of duplex house. Yeah. Yeah. What was that address? Do you remember? Yeah, it was um, twenty nine. Yeah. Twenty nine Southern Avenue. Twenty nine Southern Avenue. Yep. We rented we rented from uh, from uh, oh the guy that owns the Village Restaurant, relatives of them. The Village Restaurant is still there, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. But I think it's a different owner. Oh, because it's always recommended on the right. news reports, right. you know, go to the village right. restaurant. So was she working then? Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, she's always worked. Yeah, she worked for uh, Leo Alpa, Union Laundry. He was the mayor of Gloucester. Oh. Yeah, she worked for him for 14 years. Wow, housekeeper basically? No, no, no. No, just, just laundry. Laundry. Mm -hmm. She used to feed the mango, you know. Yep. You know the big baked mango. She'd feed yep. them, and toward the end, she would run down and catch them and package them, and the whole works. Wow. Yeah, Barbara worked. Like I say, Barbara worked for him for fourteen years. Wow. And before that, she worked for uh, uh, Jimmy Majid Sala, KPN Glass. And before that, she worked for Boston Gloucester Express. Before that, in other words, when Barbara retired, when she got 60 to 62, or 65 rather, her work record was 50 years. She worked since she was 12 years old. Wow. Okay. Yeah, she, um, she worked at the Gloucester Travel, and she also worked at, for, um, it's a bakery in West Gloucester, it used to be there years ago. 
she worked there. Most of it was laundry kinds of things or everything? Oh, she's done everything. She's done a lot of things. She's done everything. Wow. Now, we're after, okay, let's go back to after you were married. So now we have a nice reception, little reception in your yep. apartment mm -hmm. in um, Essex. Essex, yep. And, and Tilly Farnham attended it. Who did? Tilly, attend, Tilly Farnham. She owned Farnham's restaurant. Oh. Yeah, yeah, she, she, had, she attended it. And then when it got 10 o'clock, she says, okay, that's enough for the reception, you know, the party. Get down and clean my restaurant. So, <laughs> yeah, and she said, make sure and take your wife with you. So I took Barbara and me, and we went down to Farnham's restaurant. And uh, we opened the back door, and there's a brand new refrigerator with a white bowl with a red bowl on it. Oh, isn't that it was a sweet? Present for her. So. So now you didn't have to go shopping every day. No, she uh, Tilly was a wonderful woman. I I I wrote the poem for her funeral. I cleaned the place for twenty nine years. Wow. Yeah. So all my original poetry is written on the back of restaurant placemats. Right. Okay. The Ship Ahoy, Skipper's Galley, every one of them I would write, you know, because my, my uncle would be get done way before after, after I did. Right. And I would just be waiting for him, so I'd just write a poem. So you were working in partnership with your uncle on this, on your... No, my uncle just worked, he lived with us. He lived with you? Yeah. But you and Barbara. So yeah. you and, so we had a two-bedroom apartment or something yeah. like that in Essex, and yeah. then he lived there, and you lived there, and yeah. you, had, you had your business Yeah, we there. took him in several times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Several times. Okay, so he's we... He's my mother's brother. He's your mother's brother, right. Yeah. So who was alive at that time? So you had... So you, at that point, you still had your father. Yeah, my stepmother. Your, and your stepmother. Yeah. And... What about brothers and sisters? Where were they then? Yeah, they were all around. At, at that time, yeah, I had, um, there was 14 of us. Oh. There's now 13 of us. Right. Because right. I lost my brother Richie last year. Wow, that's a long time. Yep. So, were, were you all together basically a family? Not, I know you're married now, but but essentially, what, what number were you? The first, you were the... Well, on the original? Yeah. I was the baby. Oh, you're the baby. I'm the so, baby of the original Todd family. Okay, so before the stepmother. Right. And then the stepmother had some children too. Right. How many were the stepmother's children? She had 11. She had 11 of them. Yeah. So the original, okay, so there were originally three. Right. In that and row. then she had 11 more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So were you all close as a family then? Or not, really. not really. Not really? Mm -hmm. Not really. Not really, because... Uh, you know, I kind of shied away because, you know, in state homes, you weren't, you couldn't have more than one or two brothers or sisters, or, you know, or family. So I wasn't used to having five or six and seven around. So that's why I went out and shot the shoes to escape that. <laughs> okay, so if you had... Three. Three. So if you were, what was this about the state homes? So if they knew you had more than... Two brothers and sisters, you would no, be no, no. No, it was, no, it was what it got to be. Each home that you went into, right? It turned out to be that. I see. There wasn't no rule about it, but it was just it turned out to be that. Right. So you and your brother, and did you was it a sister that were in the same home together? All right. My my sister Sylvia and I were two homes together, mm -hmm. two years, one year apiece. My brother Eddie, he was never with us. He was he ended up in one home in Salem for the whole 10 years. Oh. Yeah. So you and your, I remember you mentioning something about there was something odd about you and your sister always moved together, but then she split out and did her own thing or didn't want to, didn't want to be in the same place as you were. No, 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 no. 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 It just, it just happened per chance on the first home. I was just a baby. I was like a year, year and a half old. Wow. When I and remember now, she's five years older than I am. Right. Okay. So that's why she got was jealous and stuff like that. Why she did her thing with the <laughs> with the ladies' bureau and stuff. But five years. What What are you talking about now? Well, when we lived with Mrs. 
um, I forget the name, but when we, when we lived uh, with my when I lived with my sister in the first home, um, I think, which, is, uh, which is where at that point? In yeah. um, well, I know her name was Mrs. Wingate, and I I'm not sure where it was. The home is you were too small. I mean, right. you were not even one. So right. or just about one. So, right. but probably around Gloucester somewhere. No, 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 no. No, we had to be. According to my sister, we had to be 60 miles away from Gloucester. Really? Yeah, this is what she told me. Yeah. So you were you were close to Boston or something? Yeah, Milton. Kingston, you were in Milton Duxbury. then. Yeah, Milton, Kingston, Duxbury, all the all that area. Wow, fancy addresses anyway. Yeah, fancy addresses because, in my opinion, they were just keeping up with the Joneses as far as taking us in. Well, speaking, wasn't Barbara's name Jones? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, it, it's hard. Well, anyway. Anyway. So, so the first home that we were in. Wow. I guess it's, so. My sister Sylvia was kind of jealous. Mm-hmm. Right. So because she, then you're the cute little baby and she's the bratty older sister. Right. You got it. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyway, so what she did, she took me into the lady's bedroom and she took and wiped all the stuff off her bureau onto the bed. She got up, wet the bed, then got back down, put me on the, in, the, in the middle. <laughs> Who, the, the lady told you later? No, no, no. Barbara told no, Who told you later? No, no, it just it happened. I just... You remembered it? I, I, I recall it, yeah. And How old were you then? Probably a year and a half, two years. Nobody remembers things that old. I do. You do? I do. That's I do. amazing. I do. Remember uh, when I was born, I was born with the... Uh, my, when I was a baby, when they found me in the, in the, the crib, I had my head jammed in the slats. And you think that gives you your incredible memory? I have no idea. All I know is that, yeah, my sister told me a lot too. Uh huh. Okay, she kept nothing from me from secrets. You know, her and I are very close. So anyway, despite the bed wedding and well, this is what I'm getting, getting to. Well, I think maybe four to five years later. Yeah. She ended up in another home with me, and that was in Milton. That was the Spears. And what happened there is, when I got there, she treated me like a king. Really? Yeah, because she, the way she did the first time, you know, okay? Right. So she was very protective of me. So at that point you were what, six years old? Probably six, six and a half. And she would have been 11 or early right. teen, very right. early teenager, right? right? And, she, and she protected me. And how many kids were in that family with there you? There was just one. But he was spoiled rotten. And what happened is this he would pick on me all the time. Oh. No, really, he really picked on me back. So we were in the back of the house one day. To me, this looked like a cliff, but it really wasn't. Okay? And he was picking on me. And my sister Sylvia walked up to him up the back of him, picked him up by the seat of the pants and threw him off the oh. what, I, what I thought was a cliff. But he survived. Yeah, he survived. he survived. And you didn't get thrown out of the house. No, but we did. We get. We did get beat for it. What happened is that our real mother, I guess, tried to see us, and uh, we got caught trying to look in the, out the window. So we got the the belt for that. Because you'd overheard that your mother was looking for you. No, because we saw my my sister saw her come up the hill. So we ran to see if we could see her. And we got caught, and we got beat for it. And did you see your mother? No, I didn't. She did. I didn't. So, at that point, were you connecting with your mother at all? No. No, because I didn't see her. And, and my sister, see, my sister was five years old Yes. when she went on the stage. Yeah. So she knew my mother. Right. I didn't. Right. Okay. I didn't know her until the, when I was shining shoes. So your sister was aware of your mother. Was your mother actually looking for you all you, all those years? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 